Bond Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Anne Blythe. Tonight's play, That Moore Girl. <laughs> If you were living in the South Carolina village called Edgefield in the revolutionary year 1780, you might have heard talk of impending battle, and you might have heard talk about the toy Knight Riders, but you certainly would have heard talk about that, that more girl. girl. Plague, take me if she ain't done it again. What's she been up to this time? Setting the river afire? No, sir, but I swear she could if she had half a mind to. <laughs> yeah, this happened last week out at her stepfather's farm, Sam Savage's place. What happened? Well, sir, a trooper brace on patrol rides up. Mm-hmm. The captain comes thumping in, slapping his jackboots with a whip. And Did it? Yeah, and demands provisions for his men. All the food in the house. No. And then up steps little Miss Bahethlin Moore. <laughs> Give him a tongue lashing, did you? Yeah, <laughs> fair peeled his hide off, according to Sam. <laughs> what happened? Go on. Yeah, well, after about five minutes, that captain backed out. Bowing and a scraping and, and apologizing all over the place. Good for our best. Why a little beauty, too? Yeah, ain't she now? Yeah, it looks like a peach tree in blossom. <laughs> yeah, well, sir, it seems all we do around here is talk about that, that more girl. girl. I declare I don't know what Edgefield's coming to. Her tell when that nice Rhett Nixon came a-courting, she threw dishwater all over him and called him a dirty Tory scallywag. Oh, that was last week. This week, her stepfather locked her in her room so she couldn't get out to see that Lieutenant Butler she's so crazy about. Billy Butler? Yes. That wild young limb of Satan? That's the one. <sighs> so what does Bessie do? But put on a pair of her brother Robbie's britches, yes. pants, mind you, and climbs down the rain spout. I declare, the little snippet. <laughs> I'm that Moore girl. And what they say is true. Some of it, anyhow. Somehow I seem to be made to get myself into trouble. My true name is Beheslin Moore. My father found that somewhere in the Bible, I guess. I don't really know. But folks mainly call me Bess. Only my stepfather, Mr. Savage, calls me Beheslin. And that shows how much he likes me. He locked me up again, of course. And I got out again. I always do. And I met Billy Butler again, as I said I would. In a forest clearing down near the river. My, but Billy looked handsome in his fine new uniform. And when he saw me coming... Bess! Thank heaven you got away. I've been waiting since sundown. Young Robbie let me out this time. Good for Robbie. He's a brother in a million. (laughs) And now that you... Come here. I wish you could hold me close forever, dear. I'd like to. There's nothing at all I'd like better. Why can't we be together then always? We can. When the war's over and we're married... When your stepfather sees the light. Why does he hate me so? Heaven knows we're on the same side. He says you're wild. They all say you're wild. They say I'm a fool to care for you. Do you believe him? No. No, I'll never believe him. I was wild, Bess. Plenty wild before I met you. But now I've settled down. I've won a commission and I... Billy, the arm of your coat, it's torn. There's blood on it. Oh, it stopped bleeding. Now, just a scratch. I had a brush with a troop of Tory raiders up the road apiece. Oh, you might have been killed. <laughs> so I might. So I always might. But I found out plenty of this trip. Bess, do folks around here know you saw me last week? Yes, they've been talking about nothing else. Their tongues have been going like so many shuttles. clackety clack. Good. I want you to let them know you've seen me again. But my stepfather, Mr. Savage... Are you afraid of your stepfather? No. I'm scared of no one at all. Spread the word, then. Tell them you've seen me again and that I had bad news for you. Tell them I said the Americans under Captain Wallace are running away. Say that we're crossing back over the river into Georgia for good. What? Say we're holding up in Augusta. But you're not... No, no, we're not. But Wallace wants the British to think we are. Bess, the main body of the enemy is moving south tomorrow along the river road. Well, we'll be waiting for them in ambush. ambush. Just below the rapids where the road along the river runs through a narrow pass. The place is called Red Rock Point. But... Do you think they'll believe me if I say Captain Wallace is leaving the whole county to be plundered? Of course they will. Half of them because they're Tories. The other half because they always believe bad news about militia troops. Will you do it, Bess? Very well. Lieutenant. As a good soldier. Another kiss to seal the bargain? A hundred if you want them. (sighs) Now I must leave. 
I have only two hours to get down river. And the British cavalry screen will be moving south before dawn. You be careful, Billy. Don't worry, Bess. I'm always careful these days. The army takes a lot of that wildness out of a man. It makes you cautious. Someone's coming. No, no, that's my own mount down by the road. Must you truly leave so soon? Bessie, both roads down river will be crawling with enemy troops in a matter of hours. I've just time to get out ahead of them. It's goodbye, I'm afraid. Goodbye, my love. God go with you. Oh, come on. He can't see you waving any longer. It makes him. Makes a pretty picture, though. Touching. Just like a play. Weeping beauty parts from soldier lover. Tears, heaving chest, waving... Red Nixon, what do you mean by following me? I didn't follow you. A number of loyal citizens, myself included, have been on patrol duty this evening. Patrol duty? Whose bond did you burn? Whose stock did you run off? Whose children did you scare half to death? Now, now, the night's still young. There may well be burning bonds in these parts before sunup, judging by what I heard. You heard what Lieutenant Butler told me? Of course I heard. I came up on Butler's horse by the roadside. I noticed the militia brand, so I decided to investigate. You sneaking Tory coward, Ma. My dear Miss Moore, you should remain eternally grateful to me. I could have killed your pretty rebel lover quite easily. One shot from yonder... But you were afraid. You were afraid to fire. What I heard was more valuable to me than Butler's death. So I let him live. He'll return to Captain Wallace and his bushwhacking traitors downriver... In turn, I shall pay a visit to my good friend, Colonel Tarleton, at British headquarters. You'll tell Tarleton of the ambush? You'll sell out your own countrymen, your neighbors? I'll do my clear and simple duty as a loyal subject of His Majesty. You'll sell your information, and you know it. Uh, I have it your way. The result, in any event, will be the same. Captain Wallace, with his dashing lieutenant and all his farm boy louts who play at being soldiers, why, they'll all be killed or captured. The ambushes will be ambushed in turn. Not if I warn them first. Now get out of my way. No, 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 not at all. I was wondering when that view of the situation would occur to you. I'm afraid you're not leaving this charming moonlit glade tonight. Not alive, sweet Bess. You wouldn't kill you? No, I think not. I should, you know, it'd be safer... But such thoroughness on my part might just possibly cause trouble later on. No, I think I'll just... Hurry you up! Take your hand off Let me go, do you hear me? No! No! You little devil! No! No! In the end, Red Nixon overwhelmed me. But for many a day, he bore the marks of my teeth on his hands and on his throat. He tied me hand and foot with rawhide thongs and hurried off to carry the story to his British master. Hours passed, and it must have been midnight before I heard a voice calling. Bess! Oh, Bess! Robbie! This way, Robbie! Bess! Over here! This what happened. Who did this to you? Never mind now. Get me loose. Untie my hand. There you are. There. Now help me with these. Uh, Yes, Rick Nixon. Oh, I'll kill him. I'll follow him wherever he goes and I'll kill him. Oh, there. I'm free at last. Oh, what's the oh. matter, Bess? Oh. Are you hurt? Oh, I'm just sort of bruised and stiff. Oh, Robbie, we've so much to do. Where's Mr. Savage? I'm searching for you. It was Tom Powers and Joe Treat. Gosh, he was hot mad when he found you'd run off. Gave me a larrapin, too. Oh, we must find him. We'll need all the men we can find. But you haven't said what happened. I'll make it quick. I met Lieutenant Butler here. He asked me to help him fool the British and lead them into an ambush. Gosh. But Rhett Nixon overheard us. Oh, don't ask me to explain now. Now Nixon's gone to tell the British, and we've got to warn our folks that their plan is known. We'll need help. We'll even need Sam Savage. Come along. We're going home. <laughs> Sam? Well, what? She's gone, Joe. I'm not sure I care. I don't understand her. I don't understand her at all. Where could she go? We looked everywhere. Uh, you don't suppose... No, I don't. 
You mean, Joe, she might have run off with that Billy Butler? Well, could be. Could be. It's happened before this. <laughs> These lively girls have gone off with Butler. I right Now, Sam, now. <laughs> if she's gone with Billy, she won't get far. Do you see those roads? Uh, knee deep in soldiers. Something's up. I never saw so many troops in town. Something sure is happening, something big. And we're in the middle of it, right? Spang in the middle of it. Yeah. Question is, where's Beth? What was that? Musket shot clearly. Well, the thing started. She's out there, so's Bobby. Uh, what do we do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let her take the chances she's made for herself. But if she comes back, if she does come back here... What'll you do, Sam? I... Uh, I don't know. I'll leave you alone, can't you? Stop harping about that confounded moor girl. The shot was meant for us, for Robbie and me, as we cut across the fields, but we made it. And after all the angry talk that clattered around me when I got back home, I pleaded with my stepfather to carry the message that must reach the American commander. But I tell you, girl, you ask the impossible. Now, both river roads are thick with enemy troops. No one could get through. Any man would try. They have learned out. Now, I was glad to see you safe again. I thought to say no more about your wanton disobedience. But surely you can see you've caused this terrible mischance yourself. I'd not lift a finger to save the man I forbade you to see again. You asked me to risk my life for him. Not just for him, for Captain Wallace's whole command. Why, most of them come from this county. They're the sons of your friends, your neighbors. Well, they must take their own risk this night. The chances of war. How can you talk that way? Don't you know who they are? Yes, I know who they are. A pack of reckless children. Who made them reckless? Who talked them into rebellion against the king? Whose mouth was loudest cry and fight? Fight, fight! I'm not listening to this. You will listen. When the British were far away, it was you who spoke in the square. It was you who promised those boys heaven on earth that they'd leave their farms to live like hunted animals. Heaven? Stop calling me that. It was you and and Joe Trethe and Tom Powers, the three of you, talking, talking, talking. Be still, girl. I will not be still. Now that Tarleton's here right at your doorstep, you're changing your mind. I ask you just once more, will you? Will just one of you help me to get word to Wallace? My answer is no. I am not a fool. <laughs> Joseph Treat, is that your word as well? <clears throat> your stepfather's right, Bess. It'd be madness to ride these roads tonight. <laughs> Tom Powers, you who can shout so loud against the king and the Tories when the rum is on you. Is this your word now? I'm a sensible man, Miss Moore. Drink or no drink. The whole county's overrun. It's time to hold up. I have my rifle here and I'll use it if they come to take me. But not until then. My answer is no. I, well, I'm a sensible man. Give me that gun, then. Give it to me. Yeah, what are you trying to do? Hand that back. Sam, she took my rifle. Yes, then give it back. No. I'm going myself, and no one's going to stop me. Not while I have this. Wait. Stand back. I swear I'll kill the man who tries to keep me from that door. Yes, I'm coming with you. No, Red, no. We won't take the roads. We'll take the river. My canoe's moored just below the far pasture. The river? But the rapids, you'll never make it at night. Can we make it, Robbie, the two of us? Can we get down the river? Surely we can. We've got to. Good, then we'll try. Get the door open behind me. Get the bar. Now run for it, Robbie. Have the canoe ready. Uh, Miss Moore, I've run that white water myself in the daylight. I tell you, it can't be done in the darkness. Not with a boy to steer. Stand back. Robert's a better man than the three of you together. Back up. Now... I'm going to slam this door, but I'll not be far off outside. And I'll kill the first man that follows me. Goodbye. Should we try to stop her? Should we, Sam? No, let it go. She'll pay this night for her forwardness with her life. Turn to our cavalcade play, That Moore Girl, starring Anne Blythe. We 
We are in the middle years of the revolution. A great danger threatens the small American militia force in South Carolina. Bess Moore and her brother Robbie are trying to bring a warning to the American troops. Clouds hid the moon as my young brother and I stumbled down the slope to the river into the Indian dugout canoe my true father had made with Robbie's help so long ago. When I saw we were not to be followed, I ran for it. Robbie was waiting for me already in the stern of the dugout. Get in, sis. Take the bow. Oh, wait. I can't let you do it, brother. I'll go it alone. Oh, you'd swamp before you'd even reach the white water. This boat's made for two, you know that. There's got to be one to steer when we hit the chutes and one to paddle. There's nothing else to do, then? Nothing else. And don't be scared, Bess. I've lived in this boat for three years. It was the only way I could keep our old man Savage's sight. But have you passed the rapids before? Oh, but plenty of times. I know every rock. If only the clouds had let the moon come out, but... Oh, well, come along. Yes, we've barely time enough. Who said it? There. Now, I'll push off. Just you paddle like I taught you. Mm-hmm. Get again straight away, Stroke. Easy and slow. All right. Yes, Robbie. The river is getting narrower. We'd best keep one out in the middle. The road's too close. Maybe troops on it. Well, good thing now the moon's still hit. Hey, you on the river. Who are you? They sing you. Hush up and paddle. Keep it quiet. You out there. Who are you? Put it in the shore. Paddle, sis. We can lose them. All the right fire. Begin, sis. Begin. <laughs> Robbie. We're all right now. River's quiet here just before we hit the white water. I'm tired. I'm terrible tired, Robbie. Can't be much longer now. Listen, we're almost down the rapids. Is that... Is that it? That's the fast water, all right. You'd better rest a bit now. No need to paddle here. Current's strong downstream. Just let me... Just let me steer. Robbie. Yeah? Do you know any prayers? Oh, I got no time for them. I've just been saying to myself, moon, moon, come out. Oh, moon, come out so I can see the rocks. But she just don't want to come out. The clouds look lighter. I've been praying all the way. Listen. Rocks. Rocks just around the bend. Here we go. You're looking for steady now. Look at the water! Don't be scared, Beth. Don't be scared. We'll make it. Look. Look, the moon's out. I can see. I can see the rock. Made it, Bess. We're uh, through it now. Bessie, you all right? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I must have fainted a little just toward the end. We're down past the British, all right. Where did the lieutenant say they'd be? A place called Red Rock Point. Do you know where that is? No. I, I guess I lied to you, Bess. I've never been this far down the river before. Robert! You... Never shot the rabbits like you said? No. Not until just now, I didn't. Oh. Well, I guess we'd better go ashore and take a look around. All right, Beth. Get out now. Uh-huh. Make it quiet. Don't be sure that these are... Oh, shooting. who goes there? Friends, I hope. Who in turn did I have then? Go up here on the bank where I can see you. All right. Come on, Robert. Uh, a couple of drowned rats, I'd say. Can you tell me where I might find Lieutenant William Butler? Can you take me to him? Won't be necessary, miss. Billy's right here. Oh, oh Lieutenant. What's up, Sergeant? Bess! 
are you doing here? Oh, Billy, a terrible thing has happened. We were overheard talking there in the clearing. What? The British know your plans for an ambush. They plan to surround this point and kill all of you. But I don't understand. Oh, there's no time to explain. Where's Captain Wallace? We must hurry. We must see Captain Wallace. <laughs> time, Beth. Thank heaven you were in time. Thanks to heaven and Robbie's strong arm. What's become of him? Oh, uh, Robbie? Well, uh, you see oh, now... When we left Captain Wallace, Robbie came out of the tent with us, and then he disappeared. Then you disappeared. Yes, well, um, I left you with the women folk for a while, as you asked. You were so tired. Billy, what's happened to Robbie? Well, uh, he's joined up, Beth. Joined up? But he's too young. Your brother grew to be a man tonight out on the river. We need every man we can find. And there's more to it than that. More to it? Yes. How can he go home, Bess? How can he go home to old man Savage? He said he wanted to talk with me, and that's what he asked me. He said, how can I go home? Well, I told him he could stay on here with the troops. Billy. Yes, Bess? How can I go home? I wondered when you'd start to think of that. You'd begin to realize. I have no home either. Not after what you've done. Not with the British in Edgefield. But what shall I do? What can I do? You can marry me, Bess. What? Here and now. There's a Baptist preacher in my own company. Will you do it, Bess? Billy, there's one thing I don't understand. And what's that? Why didn't you ask me long ago? There was talk about that too, of course, back home in Edgefield But when the British surrounded Red Rock Point the next morning They surrounded empty air Many of our Edgefield boys were saved to fight at Cowpens Where Morgan put proud Tault into flight And some of them lived to stand on the field at Yorktown When Cornwallis surrendered and back in Edgefield, long after the war, there was talk about pensions and talk about taxes and talk about the new land across the mountains. But just as before, there was always talk about that moor girl. girl. Would she ever rest quiet? Well, she's Mrs. Billy Butler now, don't forget. Mrs. the Honorable Congressman William S. Butler, if you please. My such heirs. <laughs> She'll always be Beth Moore to me. The idea of Beth Moore teaching school and her husband in Congress. Why'd she do what you suppose? Well, she wants to keep busy and her with six children of her own. Just wants to have a hand in everybody's business, if you ask me. Well, me for one. Me, I'm not going to talk no more about that. That Moore. Uh, know what she's up to now? You mean the Honorable Congressman's wife? What she want this time? Money. More money. More money for schools. More taxes for schools. Says all the kids ought to have schools. All of them. <laughs> I bet she runs old Billy Ragged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Well, she ain't changed much. No, no, she ain't. Still pretty. Mighty pretty. She looks like a peach tree in full bloom. <laughs> she does, for a fact. Always did. You know something? No. What? Is there one man in all the Carolinas I envy? It's a Mr. Congressman William S. Butler. Land sake. What a girl. <laughs> so, I'm still that Moore girl. I'll never live it down. But my sons, my six fine sons... They grew up with the country, and four of them moved on west. And they helped make the nation that runs in your day from sea to sea. One of them was governor in a state carved out of a wilderness. Another helped build a railroad to bind all the states together. Yes, I'm that Moore girl, and I'm proud of it. Thanks to Ann Blythe and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, That More Girl. 
And now Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. When you set out to find a place to build a new home, you have certain standards in mind. You want to know, for instance, how near are the schools, what transportation is available, what are the taxes, and so on. But picking a home for a modern industrial plant is an even more difficult problem. In selecting the site for a plant to manufacture DuPont's newest man-made fiber, Dacron polyester fiber, 87 different locations received careful analysis. 13 months were spent in the search, and 83 different factors were considered in making the choice at Kinston, North Carolina. Among the things that DuPont wants to know about a possible plant location are the size of the local labor supply, nearness to towns and markets, water and electrical power, prevailing winds and soil structure. Sometimes a location seems ideal in nearly every way, but has a drawback. This happened at one place where a deposit of oyster shells, 10 million years old, underlay the proposed site. The formation was porous and pocked with holes. To provide a solid foundation for the new plant, DuPont engineers pumped a thin cement mixture into the ground to fill up the holes. The factors that influence the choice of a location have meaning for the people who will work there, contributing to their convenience and comfort. And they have meaning for you, too. For they affect the cost of the material that will be made in the new plant. And that is why the decision rests in the hands of a group of specialists best suited to evaluate every possibility. For the most part, these specialists are engineers, representing the variety of skills and talents that make engineering one of the most diversified and rewarding of professions. There are hundreds of these engineering specialists at DuPont and openings for hundreds more. Young engineers in college today will find great opportunity at DuPont in helping to produce tomorrow's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by George H. Faulkner. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With our star and live, you heard George Petrie as Billy, Stotts Cotsworth as Rhett, and Bobby Santon as Robbie. And live appears in the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, producers of Because of You, starring Loretta Young and Jeff Chandler. And this is Cy Harris speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, next Tuesday, the National Broadcasting Company has preempted cavalcade time in order to bring you the election returns. But we'll be back two weeks from tonight when the DuPont Cavalcade will present One Nation Indivisible, the exciting story of a woman's faith and a man's fight against insurmountable odds. Our star, Thomas Mitchell. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you tonight from the Belasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, just for laughs, listen to Red Skelton on NBC.